We want to welcome to the program Samantha Matson. Hello, Samantha. How's everything? I'm very good, Ed. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us on the show. So let's jump right to it. Uh, how did you begin your introduction to uh, the world of sports? So I began my introduction into the world of sports actually through track and field. Um, I started um, I started in uh, junior high school in track and field and gymnastics, and turned out I was um, pretty good and continued that into um, high school. And it was actually after high school that I got interested in, um, you know, lifting weights and bodybuilding. And that's partly because my whole life I've always been, like, muscular. I remember when I was a young kid, um, adults commenting on, you know, those muscular legs on that redhead over there. <laughs> so... Okay, all oh, sweet, awesome, awesome. Now we're gonna uh, get more into uh, uh, bodybuilding a little bit later. But so you said your introduction was through uh, the world of gymnastics and track and field. How did you? Uh, how did that develop you for your next life in the world of health and fitness? Um, well, I think just you know when you when you're in when you're in junior high school and high school, you're. You know, athletics is just sort of another part or another facet, if, if you will, of, you know, your persona, right, to the world. So you don't place the same kind of, I mean, even though you work really hard, you put a lot of time into it, as far as it really, I think, defining you, that comes later if you tend to stick with athletics, like after you graduate from high school, or if you go on to be a collegiate athlete, and stuff like that. So um, I think it was just the passion and the love of, uh, you know, doing sports um, because I like to do all kinds of sports uh, and, um, you know, just being, staying fit and that feeling that you get when you just have a good training session. I, I mean, you just can't beat that. One of my favorite um, quotes is, nothing tastes as good as fitness feels, and, um, you know, I believe that 110%. Rightfully so. I mean, definitely, as they say, uh, you know, when you, you keep moving your body, you know, your body will be good. If you take care of your body now, definitely take care of you later. And uh, definitely you, something that you've done uh, throughout for a while now, taking care of your body, and that's you being a, a competitive bodybuilder. How did you come into the sport of bodybuilding? Well, I saw it was, I think maybe it was two years out from high school, and I saw a poster for a bodybuilding event, and I just remember thinking, and they had pictures, you know, of, you know, some of the winners on there, and I was just thought, wow, that, wow, that looks really kind of cool, and um, I, like I said, I already was very fit and toned, and um, so I just, I basically started working out with my dad's home weight set just in lifting, and then I joined um, a local gym where I actually met my future coach because I was coach for the first uh, seven years of my life in uh, bodybuilding. But um, So that's kind of like how it sort of got started with that. But there's one interesting story. When I was, so I was working at the airport, and I had... Um, it was Pete Grimkowski, and I will never forget this. He was Mr. World at the time, and he, I was in a dress, and he came up to me and said, Lady, if the rest of your body looks anything like those calves, you should be a bodybuilder. <laughs> and I never, ever forgot that, and so that really motivated me. That's, it was actually after that that I went and found a, you know, a gym that I could join that, you know, where I could really get some good um, – training and, you know, just have access to all the equipment. Did, with your gymnastics and track and field background, did that help you for, to train for, for this sport? Um, that's, so I've always been disciplined. Always been disciplined. That's definitely one of my strengths. And so, I mean, from that aspect, probably, you know, um, I, you know, I have good genetics that kind of lends itself well for bodybuilding. I, you know, definitely have my 
the woman's version of my father's legs, who which are you know pretty muscular. So, um, so yeah, I, I would say I guess from the standpoint of just that discipline of training and kind of knowing that you have to put in work and you have to put in hours. I mean, I can tell you that you know going to the gym and lifting and then deciding that you're going to compete um, either at a state level or a national level is you know, it's definitely a different ball game and it requires, you know, a, a real mental, you know, commitment just because of everything that surrounds that. Because where bodybuilding is different than a lot of other sports is that, you know, if you're a tennis player or a swimmer or something, you know, a gymnast even, you can go you can go and do your training and, 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 and your practices and all of that, but afterwards you don't have to be as careful on your food. But with bodybuilding, because that, you know, the food and the nutrition play such a big role in you preparing for a show, um, it, in that way it's very, very different than a lot of other sports, right? So you kind of live it. 24 7 if that makes sense it makes a whole lot of sense do you remember your first contest i do remember my first contest <laughs> yes i took third place yep <laughs> and okay, i, well, I well, didn't uh, properly oh i'm sorry go ahead no i was just saying uh you, you said you took third place and in, in, uh, what weight class was this um, this was, so I'm trying to think, it was in 1983 was my first show, yep, and uh, I'm trying to, I don't even think they had weight classes, because I've always been heavyweight, you know, I've always, I started out competing at about 100 and, um, let's see, about 133 pounds, so I was always in the heavyweight category. Like I said, I've been kind of like this real dense, muscular girl for, I mean, most, you know, growing up. I mean, I, and all through, like I said, you know, uh, junior high and high school. So um, when I started lifting, my body just really responded to, um, and I'm 5'5", five five, so, I mean, that gives you an idea. Okay, you said something earlier uh, before uh, I really interrupted you. You said that you you remembered your first show when you were getting ready to say that you didn't properly train train for the show. I didn't. Well, I was I was trained. I had nice muscle tone, but I definitely did not know how to truly um, prepare for the show regarding the nutrition factor. <laughs> so um, I mean, it was really actually kind of funny because I was really more about you know, caloric intake and shrinking. I mean, seriously, like my lunch was instead of eating six chicken nuggets, I was eating five. I mean, just had really no concept of what that really was. And what's interesting is it was after that show that it really made me want to learn more about, you know, nutrition and physiology. And, and it's actually bodybuilding that inspired me to go back to college and get my exercise um, sports degree and then go on to get my master's in exercise physiology because I so, you know, loved the human system just on, the, you know, the stressors that it can take because exercise is a stressor and, and how it adapts. It's just so fascinating. Indeed, it is fascinating. There's so many fascinating things about the sport of bodybuilding. One of the things that you mentioned is nutrition. I know nutrition is is a key component of not just sports, but just everyday life in general. Just tell me how significant is in the sport of bodybuilding, just because you mentioned about um, they said six chicken nuggets, you ate five chicken nuggets, but how important is it in terms of as far as um portion sizes and uh, proteins or carbohydrates and things of that nature? You know, it's really critical, that whole, you know, percentage of, of carbs, proteins, and fats, right, on, like, what you're getting. Um, and so when I, like I said, my very first show, I really didn't know how to um, diet for the show. And I did the typical about losing weight. And with bodybuilding, it's not about losing weight. It's about getting your skin to look like saran wrap around your muscles. That's the goal. 
So how do you do that? You've got to shrink that subcutaneous layer that sits between the skin and, you know, those muscles and get that as lean as possible. The other thing that you've got to do is you have this sort of water balance that you have to manage, uh, which becomes a l more critical the couple days, uh, you know, uh, of the show uh, as you're approaching the show and, of course, certainly during the show, because you have three basic water compartments that your body, you know, that you store water in your body. You've got, you know, your, you have your muscles, of course, and you have your cells, and then you have your interstitial space, right, is where wa water is. And so what happens is, like, for example, blood volume, the bot it's really important for blood volume to stay, like, at a, at a certain level. And so the, you know, the water content, if you will, that's in blood is not going to be compromised. So you have to, so the body's got to figure out another way where you're going to tighten up, if you will, with this, um, with your water balance. And the goal is to get the body to, to do, take the water from those interstitial spaces so when that happens, everything comes together nice and tight and you just look very dry and lean and healthy. But it is, you know, it is about, you know, how you eat. Now, for everybody's a little bit different. You'll see a lot of bodybuilders because I, we, you know, when you're back at shows, you're always talking about, you know, what, well, what's your prep for the show? How, how many weeks do you diet? And, um, you know, like, you know, what's your percent composition of your, um, basically macronutrients. So for me, a 10% fat, 40% um, or 50% carbs and 40% protein worked really well. So my body responded to a, a little bit lower fat content and um, I did really well with that. So I was eating, uh, um, let's see, for like 100 and, about 140 pound person, I was eating probably what, 200 grams of protein, I think, a day, which is actually getting more than that, about 220. Pretty significant. Okay, what is your, uh, d d for competition, like, what, what does your diet consist of? Yeah, so, you know, it's really funny because, so in the morning, um, I like to train in the morning, but it, so in the morning I would just have, uh, like, or one serving of just plain oatmeal, and then um, with some protein powder mixed in, you know, like nothing else. And then um, in the afternoon, I would have some kind of a protein shake, and sometimes I would have a bar. Um, and then in the afternoon, it was, you know, some uh, brown rice with maybe a sweet potato and you know, plain chicken. I used Mrs. Dash a lot because it had no salt in it, but, but it was quite flavorful. You know, you could get your meats to be pretty flavorful. And then in the, um, sometimes I would allow a snack in between, say like, um, you know, if I was, you know, just like a single apple, but it would be only, usually only one to two fruits that I would have in a single day, either apple or a, like a serving size of blueberries. And then um, you would ha I would have dinner, basically lettuce and, you know, more chicken. And then if I was really hungry at night, I would just cook up some just straight egg whites and, you know, just eat them. So I, I was eating about six, I, would say, I think six meals a day on average. And, um, you know, about every three to three and a half hours I was eating some, you know, something. And, and the key thing was just to make it sure that it had some protein in it because, you know, your goal was to get a certain gram amount by the end of the day. And um, so that's kind of like what my uh, food intake. So a lot of chicken, you know, occasionally some broccoli, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, brown rice, but not a lot because, um, you know, I, I rarely did more than a cup of brown rice, so, but, and I always had that one in my mid-mail, never my evening meal. 
Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, again, yeah, it, it's amazing how it, just that sport in general, just with in terms of uh, things you have to cut back on, and then there's so many measurements, like how many grams of, of carbs and protein and things that you have to eat and things of that nature. That's, that's interesting that you broke it down because, every, like you said, every competitor is different in terms of uh, diet. Now, speaking of diet, you know, once the show is over with, like what, what are your uh, some of your, your favorite cheat foods? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, a good old-fashioned, um, soft, chewy chocolate chip cookie is, <laughs> like, probably my all-time favorite. One of the, it's really funny, one of the things I learned, I remember after the first couple of shows I had, you know, it's like the night after you go, oh, I'm going to go have, you know, strawberry pie, or I'm going to go eat, you know, like a turkey sandwich or something like that. And um, I, I remember, the, like, I think it was after my second show, I got kind of sick. The next day I didn't feel very well. And I, you know, I, and, and I tied that to the fact that, okay, I can't do that after a show like that. I've got to gradually come back into sort of normal eating instead of doing it like that. And, and so, I mean, because there were some shows where, I remember craving just like a good old tuna fish sandwich because, you know, you'd eat tuna plain. Tuna was another thing that I, I ate a lot. But you would, um, those are the two meats. The proteins usually was either come from a protein, some kind of a protein shake or protein bar, and then chicken and tuna. And, um, and then, of course, the egg whites. But, you know, just like good old tuna mixed with, um, you know, mayonnaise and slept on a nice whole wheat piece of bread. And just to eat something like that was, I, I remember eating that one time after a show and it just tasted so good. And everyone else is, you're not going to go have cake? And I'm like, no, I've been there, done that, and I don't want to get sick. <laughs> Lesson learned, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now let's, let's talk a little bit now about training because again, every competitor has a different way, different ways of training. How would, how do you separate? What does your training consist of? Do you work on several body parts a day, or do you work on maybe a certain uh, like upper body, maybe one week and lower body the next week? What does your uh, training consist of? Yeah, that's a great great question. Um, so for me, what worked out well is I would do two body parts. It would take me uh, four days to get through the whole body. And um, my coach, you know, we saw, you know, a little, when, you know, when we're assessing my physique and saying, okay, we need to have shoulders have their own day. Shoulders had their own day. And so that's why, because before that for a while I had just trained, it took me three body parts to get or I'm sorry, three days of the week to get through the full body. And so we took out shoulders and gave them their own, di own day. So we would do all, you know, pull exercises like um, chest and tries on one day, back and thighs on another, and then shoulders on a another day, and then legs, you know, thighs, quads, I'm sorry, uh, quads, hamstrings, and calves. Uh, that's how... Um, we broke it up. So my shoulders just needed a little extra, um, you know, effort to them to kind of, they were more slow growing than other parts of my body for whatever reasons. But, you know, after doing that for about two years, they really, actually it was less than that, but they really responded well. And I kind of kept to that uh, program really since. So that's, you know, that's how I do it. I know there was a time when I was competing where it was really popular to only do one body part a week. And um, I just, uh, for whatever reasons, I could, I recovered okay. I mean, I, you know, I always trained smart. I was fortunate to have somebody that really taught me um, the importance of training smart, he used to call it. And because uh, I haven't had many injuries in my career, which is, really fortunate and uh, you know I just contribute that to really understanding muscle physiology you know biomechanics and how the body responds to this exercise of stressor right right yeah, definitely. I mean, it's interesting because, again, a lot of, you know, it's, it's amazing. Again, athletes are different in the body parts. You know, everybody trains them differently. It's interesting. Now, I want to ask you, what's your, what would, what's your favorite body part or body parts that you like to train and which ones you don't like to train? 
<laughs> that's a great question. Yeah. And that's changed over the years. I used to hate to train legs and I was fortunate because my, you know, my legs were, I've always been told by, you know, other people in the industry that my legs are just my calling card. And I'm sure, you know, just the genetics that I have and then plus the track and gymnastics helped, you know, enhance, facilitate that. But um, I never really liked training them, especially calves. Ugh. And, and uh, um, so I was fortunate that I didn't really ever have to train my calves too hard. But, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I did just because, you know, you've got to, you know, it's a complete system, right? So, and, and I was going to say now I would say it's probably um, back that I really don't like training that much. I don't know why. It just seems like, I don't know, it's just hard. <laughs> okay. And then right. a favorite so body not... part. Oh, you told me that you told me a favorite body part. So yeah, so I always like yes. tra training. Um, yeah, I always like training. I always like training shoulders. Shoulders was always really fun. And then um, chest. I enjoyed uh, chest, especially when I was uh, benching. You know, just straight bar benching a lot. I I always really enjoyed um, that session. Okay, awesome to hear. So now we've gotten into the diet portion and the training portion, and of course we have to get to uh, the competing portion of it. Now, uh, what weight class or classes have you uh, competed in in the sport of bodybuilding? So I was always a heavyweight, and depending on, I know when I started in the NPC, the National Physique Committee, heavyweight was seriously 125 and a quarter pounds and above was a heavyweight. And I, you know, because like I, like I, 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 will, I at the, by the end of my career, my last weigh-in was 100 and, well, I should say my competitive career was 100 and, 140 and a half pounds, right? Because I was always trying to gain muscle. I think I started around 133 or 134. So over, you know, time, uh, like 15 years, I added muscle, I mean, to my competition weight, because that's different than what your off-season weight is, you know. When you lean down, you know, are you going to be able to maintain some of those gains that you, um, you know, you, you achieved in the off-season? And so, um, so, so, yeah, so I've always been a heavyweight no matter where I um, went. All right. Now, how many titles have you won during your career? Um, I, you know what? That's I've never actually counted them, but I probably, um, oh, at least maybe fifteen titles I've won. I, I, I. There was one year where it was really the sort of a grand slam. I won the, I won the natural America, the the natural U.S. And then I won the um, the Natural Universe, the Natural Miss Olympia, and then I won the World Championships all that year. So that was a phenomenal year, obviously, um, kind of the pinnacle probably of my career. I, I competed for a few years after that, but um, it was, uh, you know, that was an amazing year. It took me to a milk mustache celebrity uh, commercial that I did. And, you know, so anyway, it was, so yeah. So I, I probably have about 15 titles, maybe. Okay, now you mentioned about uh, the amateur and the professional ranks, and you mentioned that you competed in the amateur ranks through an organization uh, through the NPC. And in the sport of bodybuilding, everyone, whether male, ma male or female or man or woman, would like to have that pro card. Have you received your pro card yet? Yeah, I, well, I did it, but not through, I didn't do it through the NP, NPC. I did it through an organ, a, a different organization, through, um, um, it's not the IFBB, it's through, um, oh my gosh, now for some reason I'm having a brain cramp. Um, I'll think of it, but um, yes, I did receive my pro card because I remember when I won, when I first won the Olymp that natural Olympia, they called it, you know, because they, they, they drug test all the winners. 
you know, if, you, if you're in your top five in your class, you're going to go back and take a, a you know, a, you're going to go urinate in a cup. And, um, and then, of course, for the overall, um, which is, you know, so, yeah. Um, anyway, does that answer your question? Oh, yeah, that answers my question. Thank you. And, uh, you know, so you had mentioned that you competed in uh, earning your pro card through another organization, and you mentioned about Natural Olympia and other events that you've competed in. I want to know, did you uh, com always compete in drug-tested competitions, or did you have a preference? You know, I didn't, because when I first started the, you know, when I first started in Utah, right, there was the drug tested group, because there's two basic organizations here that put on shows, and the NGA and the NPC. And um, I started with the NBC because they were just the biggest. And I did, did that for a few years, and then actually I did that for longer than that, probably like eight or nine. And then I um, kind of stepped back, you know, a little bit from it and went um, and took some time to focus on, you know, just some education. I, I was in graduate school and just trying to get, um, you know, my studies done and I wanted to do well. And, um, and then when I, I met somebody who had told, who suggested that, you know, you should really look at these natural shows. There's other organizations besides just the NGA and he had mentioned a couple because he was an avid fan, if you will, of the bodybuilding scene. And um, it really was him that kind of directed me towards some of these other organizations. Cause he, and he said to me, you know, your whole lifestyle is everything about, you know, eating clean and living clean and, and doing this. And he said, have you ever thought that maybe there's a precedence with you, you know, competing in non-drug tested shows when maybe – it would better suit your, you know, your person and who you are and what you want to represent to the world in drug tested shows. And that kind of gave me some food for thought. And that's when I decided, you know what, I, I am going to step that direction and just test it out and see how it is. And it turned out to be a really great move for me. So I was really happy that I did that. What were the differences from uh, competing in, nat in natural shows as opposed to competing in, in the other shows? Were, were there differences in, how, in, in terms of the camar camaraderie between the competitors or attitudes, or did you see much of a difference? I didn't really see much of a difference between the camaraderie or the attitudes. You know, I, that was pretty similar across both shows, but there's definitely... I mean, I remember going to Miami for, I think it was the NPC U.S. Nationals. And I, you know, I can't remember her name, but she ended up going on to do some, um, like that wrestling stuff where they wear costumes. And um, she, her and I were in the same weight class. So I weighed in, I remember, at 136. And she weighed in, because I'm 5'5", five five, she was 6 feet tall, and weighed in at 160. And, and you, you won't, in a natural show, you aren't going to find those kind of disparities, like, you know, within a weight class. <laughs> you aren't going to find somebody, rarely you're going to find somebody that, that's going to outweigh you by, like, 35 pounds. So that's where the big difference was in between the two shows was just, Sometimes the mass of the competitors was just, you know, it was just, there's just more. And, you know, I don't want to diss, uh, you know, I respect all competitors and I don't want to, you know, everybody chooses the path they go. And that was just, you know, I chose the path I did because it really fit with who I was and my lifestyle. And because, um, you know, bodybuilding to me was more just than about, um, you know, the competitions and stuff, it was, a, it was a way of life. It was, you know, showed discipline. It showed grit. Um, you know, it showed that, you know, resilience and, um, you know, and how, how those things could transfer into other aspects of your life. 
wow, that's interesting to hear right there. Now, while we're on the topic of you mentioned about the competition that you were in in that particular weight class where you mentioned about uh, the young lady that had competed with you and you just was kind of like looked at as far as the her, her muscle mass was concerned. And like you said, that's there's certain things that other people do. You don't knock it, but the, but you just have your principles and what you stick to. I want to ask you, you know, and you can answer this question if you want to. Have you always been natural or were there moments where you attempted to take it or you've always just, like you said, just, you know, or the suggestion of like what your friend was telling you, you know, you always had a clean lifestyle and, and done the right things. Have you always uh, been a natural competitor? Yeah, and I, ha- I don't have a problem because if I, you know, if I didn't, I would certainly answer that um, fairly. But, uh, no, I've always been a natural competitor, but I did, I do have to tell you, there was a time I did consider it, and I considered it seriously, and I was um, married at the time, and my husband, who was a super great um, supporter of me, I mean, just the best, and he... He, we sat down and we had a talk. I remember we, there was a girl that we saw um, at, a, at a show. She placed third, and I think I had placed, uh, I want to say, was it 11th, I think? So I, I didn't, I had just missed the top 10. And so we actually took her, we told her we'd pay her consulting fee because we just were curious how she prepared for a show. And at that level, at a national level, we felt that was respectful to, you know, pay her a consulting fee to, you know, to do that. And and so we sat down with her and her boyfriend, and they were very just blatant about this is what I'm taking, right? The, just, I mean, you know, these were the... Um, you know, the steroids that she was taking and this is how she was managing it and, you know, the, her food and, and everything. And and we walked away from that like, wow, okay. Uh, we were just really impressed with her. Her physique was really great and how she, she came in really prepared for the show. She just wasn't quite as uh, maybe muscular, maybe lacked a teeny bit of symmetry to the girl that won. But um, it was close between those top three p- girls. And anyway, so my husband we came home and we, you know, he said, "Look, you, it's not my decision; it's yours. You have to make the decision on whether that's the path you're going to choose." So he, and his advice to me was, "But you've got to remember that you, you, you know, you have a lot of other things going on in your life besides just bodybuilding, right? We, you know, we have horses." We have the stuff we do at Lake Powell with the family, you know, and he's just checking off all of these things that are a big, huge part of my life. And, um, you know, so he said, you, you, you're the one that has to make this d- decision, and I will support you whatever way you go, but it has to be yours. But I just want to give you good counsel so that you weigh everything out and think about things. And so, and I did, and um, that was really great, you know, um, uh, you know, good advice, and I chose, okay, yeah, I'm, you know, I do have this wonderful full life of all these other things, and, and you know, bodybuilding isn't the only thing in my life, so I decided I'm going to stay clean. Wow, awesome to hear, man. That's an interesting revelation. On you know, give kudos to your your husband at the time, you know, for his advice and, and wisdom and seeing that as well. Instead of just seeing, he, he saw the long term benefits instead of the short term. Again, we're not knocking anybody that that's involved in it. We're not doing it. It's just what he saw fit for you and what you saw fit for yourself as well. So, uh, kudos to that on that decision. So, do you currently actively compete as of now, or are you semi retired? Yeah, I don't compete anymore, but I do, you know, I train um, almost every day, and I have been involved in the sport of body, bodybuilding through the judging side, right? I got involved in judging in 1987, and uh, actually have been judging now than longer than I competed in bodybuilding, <laughs> so it's really fun. I love seeing the athletes get up there, and, you know, when they come and ask for f- feedback, I'm always so happy because... You know, I want to lift them up and inspire them, especially if they don't place maybe where they thought they should have that, you know, uh, uh, you know, on that day at that time of the show, right? So, yeah. Okay, and speaking of, uh, you mentioned about bodybuilding helping you further your education, and, and you, you said that you got, you've received a degree in exercise physiology. Can you just tell the audience what that, 
field of what that field of study entails? Yeah, so it's physio so the you know, there's the science of physiology, which is basically the human system, the internal human system, right? So everything that's you know, all your muscles and organs and bones and all these cells and and how um, everything talks to each other and relates to each other. That's basically physiology. And then with when you get into exercise physiology, it's like, okay, so how does this physiology of this human system respond under, let's say, you know, um, under an exercise stressor? So whether it's, um, you know, lifting weights, running a marathon, you know, cross-country skiing, climbing a mountain, you know, basically that's what it is. It's that study of uh, the human system from the inside, physiology, what's going on uh, with the added stress of um, exercise. And so you can, and then that's how you learn, oh, okay, so if we, you know, do this, this, and this, wow, we're going to make real gains in performance. Um, and, you know, either increase, you know, your, your jump or maybe, you know, um, gain a quarter inch in your bicep, you know, all these things that, you know, that can be measured and validated through the study of x -phys. That's interesting, right there, because I know uh, the the study of of sports sciences and sports medicine. You know, there's kinesiology, and then there's exercise physiology. I'd never heard of that before. Uh, how do you was this? Or um, I don't want to date you or anything like at date you or anything like this. But was this a new major at the time when you were studying this, or had this been around considerably for a long period of time? Um, I hadn't been. It wasn't new. Um, and that's, you know, that's a good question, Ed, as far as like how old the study of exercise physiology is. Um, but like one of my professors at the University of Utah, he used to coach uh, the Olympic team at, in Colorado. He was, that guy was so smart. I learned so much from him. But um, so... It's been around, but I really can't. I mean, it definitely wasn't me when I was doing it. It had been around. But, yeah, so kinesiology, when you get an exercise physiology degree, you, you know, you, I, ha I had a couple classes in kinesiology. Um, I had a class in biomechanics because that, you know, kind of plays in into stuff, right, because you definitely got to understand human movement and how things function, um, you know, because that you've got to have some knowledge with that. Too. I also saw in your bio that you are also you're also a nutritionist. Do you specifically oh. specialize in like holistic nutrition, or do you just kind okay. of do cover nutrition in terms of just kind of like going across the uh, across the board in terms of the four basic food groups? Yeah, kind of more the latter, um, not so much holistic. And um, but yeah, so for the most part, you know, just I mean, my for longevity of life, my belief is that you know a paleolithic type of uh, nutrition plan is optimal, you know, for that. And so yeah, so basically just across your, you know, your vegetables, your legumes, your nuts, your fats, your proteins. Speaking of nutrition, I had to ask you, you, you mentioned to me, we talked earlier about what you, uh, the, the, foods that, the foods that you would eat to prepare for competition. Has your diet basically stayed the same or have you kind of allowed yourself a little bit you know, to uh, cheat a little bit more or is it basically kind of like the same, the same as it was that you were getting ready for a competition? Yeah. No, it's, it's, um, it's different than when I'm getting ready for a competition. I'm not... I've never been a big uh, red meat eater, uh, just haven't. I mean, sure, the occasional hamburger once in a while or, um, which, you know, that was during when I was competing, but, I mean, geez, now I'd probably eat less red meat than I did back then because uh, sometimes, you know, you just can't beat a nice 
filet mignon, especially if you haven't had one for a while, right? Just cook the right way, and it's just like you can feel all that nutrition going into you. But, um, yeah, like, so when I'm competing for a bodybuilding show, when I'm prepping for it, and I always took, I only ever had to lose, like, nine pounds to get ready for a show. I never let, I, I could see my abs all year long. I never let myself, you know, get to um, maybe out of, uh, uh, you know, out of that look, I guess, is how I would put it. But um, I would take 16 weeks to prepare, and I would just do it nice and slow. And it was really interesting because a lot of people thought I was actually getting bigger, but it was just because I was getting leaner, and you could start to see my muscles. But even though I was slowly and gradually losing, you know, some weight. Um, so... The reason why I asked that question because I know you mentioned that you grew up in Utah, and I don't want to I don't want to come off as being uh, prejudiced or anything like that. But I know Utah is a landlocked state on the West Coast, so I know normally when I think of the, the diet of Utah, I think primarily steaks and you know beef, like you mentioned, <laughs> red meat and a lot of chicken. So that's why I asked you what, what did your diet consist of then, as as opposed to now. That's why I asked that question. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, now actually I, I, I probably eat I probably eat more plant-based now than I did back then um, just because of all the research that's showing how, you know, beneficial that is. I mean, there's, there's no question that we can definitely tie certain um, lifestyle diseases to how we eat. And I really believe that food is medicine. I mean, vegetables, of which we don't get enough of, are so full and rich of phytochemicals. I think they've identified over 6,000 of them now that are, you know, they help your immune system. They help your body fight cancer. And so I'm probably eating in some, in regards as far as a holistic approach, more healthy now than I did probably then. Because in bodybuilding, it's all about, you know, so, okay, I'm, it's like chicken and tuna, right, and some protein powder. And then, okay, you know, my only grain I ever got was the oatmeal that I would have in the morning. And that, was, that became my most favorite meal because it was so absolutely delicious just to have that because otherwise you're not eating – you're not really eating bread or certainly not pasta or anything like that. So, so the, the bodybuilding diet was more restrictive in the types of food that I could eat where after competition it was, you know, I could be more open with it, but I never let myself go too much because um, I didn't want to. I mean, sure, would I introduce bread and some pasta? Yes, but I was always careful. So like if I had you know, two pieces of bread that day, I wasn't going to eat anything more like that, if that makes sense. It makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you for being detailed on that answer. Now, I want to talk a little bit about personal training. How long have you been involved in, in personal training, and how, what does your schedule consist of? Yeah, so I've been, yeah, I've been doing personal, I, I did personal training for, you know, a long time, and um, where I would meet, with clients, usually it was earlier in the morning and then, you know, later in the afternoon, evening was pretty much how it would go. The other thing I uh, did was I would coach people getting ready for not just, you know, bodybuilding, but also, um, you know, a triathlon or, you know, different different sports that I would help people with. And that was just because of my, you know, my exercise physiology. I mean, I definitely knew how to do that. And I had, I had a knack for being able to, to sort of assess someone and, and being able to put something together that really benefited them. But what I, what I love now is I've, uh, I don't really do as much personal training now. I, you know, I'll do some kind of distance or, you know, coaching either through the phone or through email or something like that. But I'll be honest, I don't do as much now. I, I've kind of switched my focus more to specialty populations like people with Parkinson's and people who have had strokes. And that has been super rewarding. 
this sounds very rewarding. I mean, as I was said earlier, you man, nothing, nothing beats the body. Nothing does the body good like exercise, man. And definitely, you're doing your part right there. Especially when working with Parkinson's patients, that's very important to keep that movement going, man. It's just something else, man. Nothing like nothing does the body great like exercise. And speaking of. What, another something that you do great as well. I mentioned that you are a member of the Utah Army National Guard. How did this come about with you being involved in the military? <laughs> yeah, so uh, there was a gym that I belonged to where I had a lot of the soldiers would come over and train. They would come live there. They would come work out there. And so I kind of got to know them because I was, you know, I was the trainer there. And they started talking, and I was helping him with their, you know, physical fitness tests that they would have to do twice a year, helping people with that, or the best warrior competition. If they had soldiers that were competing in the best warrior, they would have them come sit with me, and we would go over, lay out, you know, a plan um, on how they were going to accomplish their goal. And so that's kind of how I got introduced, if you will, to the military. I and mean, my, my grandfather uh, was a World War II vet. You know, I had an uncle that fought in Vietnam, so we had people in the military. And I, my uh, real great cousin, she's a retired command sergeant major, actually, out of the National Guard. So, um, but I, yeah, so then I just thought, wow, I, after, after, it was after 9-11, you know, so I was already associated with these people. I really enjoyed working with them. They were definitely motivated. And then when 9-11 happened, I knew 9-11 affected a lot of people. There's no question it affected this nation at our core. For me, it really made me stop and really assess how fortunate I am being a woman to be born in this country and to have accomplished so much and all the opportunities that I had I just, it just made me feel really humble and that I needed to be part of something and give back. And that's how I got into, that's how I got into the National Guard. I, I actually transferred from the Utah National Guard over to the Army Reserves. So I, I'm in the Army Reserves now and I, you know, I'm absolutely loving it. Just such a great group of people that I work with. Awesome to hear. I wanted to ask you, did you have to take, um, I, I know I hear in the military, of course, there's a fitness test and things of that nature. Did you have to do those things to get into the National Guard and then later with you joining the, the Reserve, or was it you didn't have to do any of those things? Oh, no, I did. There's a physical fitness test, yes. Um, you have to, you know, yeah, you had to pass a physical fitness test test. And before you go to a school, they make sure that you can, you know, pass that physical fitness test because when you go to a school, that's one of the first things that you're, you're going to do. And almost every school that I went to that we had to do that, it's, you know, the, you, you meet people and you kind of start talking and the word gets around, oh, you know, Madsen over there, she's, she's like really into fitness. And, and uh, so then it kind of becomes a little bit of a competition, right? <laughs> on who's going to beat her. <laughs> you know, she can do like 60 push-ups in a minute. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah, they're trying to, uh, try to get you into a competition, man. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting right there. So I want to stay with what you're doing in the military. So tell me, what are, uh, you mentioned, of course, being moved by 9-11 and, of course, talking to uh, the soldiers that were coming to the gym where you were working out working out at, but what are some of the the benefits? I know there's a, there's a lot of benefits, of course, being in the military, fighting for, uh, helping your country out and um, being patriotic, but what are, in your opinion, what have been the benefits that you've gained from being in the military? You know, one of the thing, things I love about the military is that it doesn't matter where you go, anywhere in the world, and you can be sitting somewhere, the airport, you know, at a restaurant, you know, at a, um, a pub, whatever. And you meet somebody who's in the military and, it's, you know, you'll start strike up a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden you find out they're in the military and they find out you're in the military. There's this instant kinship that is right there. It's like you guys have just been, become best buds, right? And it's just because of, there's just something about that brotherhood, if you will, that I love. And um, 
you know, and you don't know that until you get in. You you hear people talk about that, but man, it is really something. And that is one of my favorite things about the military. The other thing that I think is really that I've enjoyed about the military is it doesn't matter what color you are, <laughs> you know, what um, gender you are. Everybody gets the same pay, right, and opportunities based basically based on your rank, you know, what rank you are, and, um, you know, how many years you have in service. That's the only thing that's going to distinguish, you know, pay and opportunity is, is that, which is you don't see that really anywhere else in, in um, certainly not in the civilian world, right? You don't. Um, see, and not that there's not discrimination in the military, but I want to act like we're all virtuous, but, um, you know, it's just definitely a lot less, I, I think. And that's also been something that, um, you know, I enjoy. It's just the diversity of people that you get to work with and meet because, you know, it's not, you don't, you know, you, you become part of a team. And the goal is to, you know, you're all working together to help whatever that mission is. And if somebody is slacking behind, it's like, okay, well, I got some extra time or, you know, I can help that person out. And so it's very unified and cohesive. And I, and I just love that. Indeed, one of the many things I love about the military, just like you said, being cohesive and just, you know, giving your all and serving a, a common goal and a greater purpose and definitely one of the things you do well. And another thing that you do well is that you are an entrepreneur. Tell the audience just a, a little bit about the company. Oh, well, thank you, Ed. Yes. So as a competitive bodybuilder, you know, you put your skin through horror, just the stuff you have to paint on, especially when I was doing it because so many people just do spray tans now. But when I was doing it, you know, you had to get into a tanning bed and then you had to stain yourself, you know, several coats to get this color on because it was all about, you know, getting just about as dark as you could because when you get under those lights, they are so bright that they just wash you out. And so... um uh, you know, your skin just goes through, I mean, showering, and then after a show, you've got to scrub that stuff off with a loofah. And so I, and then also during that time, I started to look at, you know, I wanted to reduce my exposure to sort of toxic stuff that you bring into your household with just cleaning uh, you know, cleaning items. And so I had a really wonderful friend. She's my actually my best girlfriend. She showed me how to make handmade, you know, natural handmade soap. And I just fell in love not only with it, but using a wonderful bar of, you know, glycerin full soap. Just how something as simple as a bar of soap was so good. I mean, your skin just feels completely different after you shower a bath. And so I was like, wow, this really, I wish I had had known about this kind of stuff when I was competing because I could have definitely saved my skin. And so that, I, well, at least, you know, um, had it more pampered instead of having it, the harsh treatment that it did. And so that's kind of how, what sort of spawned um, a lot of that. And I, you know, started out just, you know, making soaps and I was giving it away as gifts. So I would give these soaps away into family and people started coming to me and saying, oh my God, I, I, I love your soap. Your soap is so awesome. I, I want to get some more. And I'm like, oh, hey, I'm making a, you know, I'm making a 40 bars this weekend. So, you know, no worries. I'll... And so people were like, well, you know, we'll pay you. And so that's kind of how the business got started. And then I just expanded as I continue, you know, because deep down I'm a scientist, right? I mean, I come from a science background. And so I started looking up research on, you know, different herbs and oils and how they impact your skin. And, you know, that's how this whole thing just started blossoming. And I just went from making these wonderful, you know, organic essential oil scented soaps to, you know, face serums, face creams, body lotions, scrubs, you know, lip balms, um, I have muscle balms, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And But it started out with just soap. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the website right here, and man, you, you've, got, you've got some great products on here. I'm seeing, uh, it says the uh, best-selling natural soap, handmade soap, and also 
fitness soap as well. What's the fitness soap all about? Yeah, so fitness soap is for those. So fitness soap, it's a different shape bar. It's a bigger bar. It's a heavier bar. And it's designed to kind of for people who love sporting and who love the outdoors and who love to train whatever athletic endeavor it is that they like to invest their time in because, you know, when you're, whether you're competing or whether you're out mountain biking, you know, you sweat, you um, get dirt on you, um, so, you know, all these things are, are going on with your physiology when you're really training hard. If you're outside, you're exposed, right, to the sun or to if you're a high altitude, you know, you have that working against you too. And so the fitness up line is kind of designed for those type of people. And so I've kind of, you know, like the uh, You Went to Win Soap, that's the newer one that I have is, you know, that's because that's, that's got, you know, five wonderful essential oils that smell like a pine forest. And it, you know, so for people who really appreciate the outdoors, also have some wonderful ingredients in it that just, um, you know, you can take the bar with you. It's like biodegradable and, um, you know, so along that lines. And, you know, the other bars just have these wonderful ingredients that not only help cleanse the skin, but also feed it in regard to, you know, help without, without it being drying. Because a lot of the commercial soaps and the commercial body washes, which I know people, a lot of people like to use over, over a bar of soap, but they're really more like detergent than they are um, soap. And I can't imagine anyone wanting to get in their shower and bath with Tide. So, but that's really what those bars and those body washers are, are more like. So, and it's because they strip the glycerin out because glycerin is a natural product when you when you make soap, you know. It's a, it's a basically a glycerin bar with some extra uh, essential fatty acids in there. And um, so that's kind of how, you know, this, yeah, yeah. So that's, you know, the fitness line was to kind of target those kind of people who are a little harder on their skin than the average Joe. When I was really competing, I wished I, I had something, you know, like that for sure. It would have... Oh, it would have been wonderful. <laughs> but guess what? You can guess what? Thank God you're still here because you can use your products now and because you're still active and doing your thing. And a, a lot of people are benefiting. One of the best things about your product is that it's all natural. It's free of chemicals and dyes and, and all of that stuff. Like you mentioned, it's just with the regular soaps, as you mentioned, it's it's like detergent on your body but these products are great i love it because it's high quality and it's all natural and you mentioned about uh, some of the people that have come up to you and say that they love your products what are what are some of the, the other things that people have told you just in terms of you know changes in, in in the skin and they're not suffering from eczema or anything like that what are some of the, the other things that people have told you about the product well, that's really funny that you said that. That's exactly right. I hear that probably fairly frequently about those dry, patchy, uh, scaly things that you get on your skin. Like after, seriously, after a week, like my dad had mild eczema and he started using my soap and within a week it was gone. And I hear that pretty frequently with people that they can't, you know, wow, it's like I'm just, and I said, yeah, just a simple bar of quality soap can <laughs> make a huge difference in your skin. And uh, my uh, husband, he's, he's got a really good friend who he calls them barnacles. And he's just like, when I really learned the difference of using one of your bars of soap compared to like the Irish Spring that I used to buy, he said, when I ran out of your soap and I, and I didn't, you know, I, I grabbed a bar of that Irish Spring and he said, one shower, he says, that's when I called you and said, I'm going to come over and get some of your soap because I can't, <laughs> I can't live without it anymore. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so it was, it, that's one thing. The other thing they notice, like with my lip balm, people tell me they don't have to moisturize because they feel like their lips are actually truly getting moisturized versus putting a wax layer on. I hear that with, you know, my body butters and my lotions that they're, you know, they just use less because especially if they combine it with the soap, right, because the soap's not going to dry out your skin and then you tend to use less lotion because your skin's not 
so dry. And even in an arid climate where I live in Utah, um, you know, it's it's arid here. It's dry, and um, you don't um, like you know you kind of have a system. And uh, the other thing that's really important is like the exfoliation with your skin because your skin turns over about every you know, 21 to 24 days, and so, or I'm, I'm sorry, 14 to 16 days, your skin will turn over, and so you really can help it look more glowing and alive by regular exfoliation on your face and on your, on your body, and so that's why I have a variety of, you know, sugar scrubs and salt scrubs as well as lip scrubs. Um, it's amazing what a uh, simple lip scrub can, you know, do for your lips. I hear people telling me how, it, you know, they don't have those flaky, peely things on their lips because they use that, you know, regularly. Man, your products are awesome. This is a great line, and then good luck to you in what you do. you got to check it out. Those products are looking at the website. They're awesome. And, Samantha, thank you so much for taking time out of your, best, your busy schedule to be with us on the program. Real quickly before we let you go, where can people find you on social media? If you have a website, let them know that as well. Uh, yes, Ed, thank you very much. So it's Soap Essential. It's singular, soapessential.com. Um, you could also get there with fitnesssoaps.com. Um, so there's that. And then also um, I have a Fitness Soaps Instagram as well as a Samantha Lynn SE Instagram. And then I have a Soap Essential Facebook page as well as a Samantha Lynn uh, Facebook page. So that, those are my social media accounts. Well, you heard it from her. She's Samantha Metz, and she's an entrepreneur, also an athlete, and also serving our country proud, doing her thing in the military, and um, <laughs> has done great things, and she's doing, continue to do great things. Samantha, thank you so much for being on the program. Ed, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Same way. I appreciate it as well. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.